Welcome to the Chicago Scholars Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening today and tomorrow. So please be sure to sign up for more. This presentation is being recorded and will be available for you at strivescan.com forward slash Chicago Scholars. Before we get started, I'm gonna put um, your attendance form in the chat. Um, so make sure you do this to get credit for being here this evening. And we're gonna get started with our first school, the University of Arizona. Hello everyone, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Emily Martinez and I am the regional recruiter for the University of Arizona. So even though I work for Arizona, I actually live in the Chicagoland area and I am happy to be here to tell you all about Arizona. So again, thank you so much for joining us. The University of Arizona, um, we were founded in 1885. We have a long legacy. Our main campus is located in here in Tucson, Arizona. It started off with one building and a total of three students. We've definitely grown. We now have a beautiful one square mile campus. Within that square mile, you'll have access to everything you need as a student from 23 dorms, over 35 restaurants, a movie theater, two rec centers, even a post office and a bank. Everything you need as a student is just a quick walk away. We are considered a larger university. We have about 35,000 undergraduate students and add another 10,000 graduates that makes up our student community. We do have a very large out-of-state population. In fact, about 40% of our students come from out-of-state. And Illinois itself is the third highest recruited state. Um, so we get a lot of students from the Chicagoland area making their way to Arizona. Even though we are a larger university, we are still able to offer you a personal educational experience. Our average class sizes are between 20 and 29 students, and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to 1. So why do so many students from all over the country and really all over the world choose to study with us? It's because we offer big time opportunities for all students in all majors. We are a top tier world class institution ranked in the top 1% of universities in the entire world. Arizona is a premier tier one research one institution and a renowned member of the prestigious Association of American Universities also known as AAU. AAU is an exclusive club of 65 colleges and universities from Harvard to Yale to UC Berkeley to the University of Arizona. Um, and we've given that title because we focus on providing research opportunities to students. Um, and of course, we have countless other opportunities outside of undergraduate research like internships, study abroad, service learning, and much more. So as you can see, there are tons of advantages to being in a large public university. Um, in addition, we also have a lot of different program options for you. So over 250 program options, that means we literally have just about any program to meet your needs. Some of our more popular programs are our uh, nationally recognized College of Engineering or College of Education, our top 20 ranked public business college, we're also very well known for our pre-health and medical science programs and nationally competitive for our dance and fine arts program. So as you can see across all disciplines, across all splans, we have a lot of opportunities. Countless academic opportunities, but also a lot going on outside of the classroom. We have over 600 different student-led clubs and organizations to participate in, and they range from academics to leadership to student government to special interests and social clubs to um, fraternity and sorority life to athletics and recreation and everything in between. So definitely a lot to choose from. One of my favorite clubs to point out is Zona Zoo. It is the official student section for our Division I Arizona Athletics, and it has been consistently ranked by ES as the biggest, loudest, and best student section in all of the Pac-12 conference. Go Wildcats! Living on campus is also a great way to get involved. Um, we have really unique housing options and or requirements in the sense that we have none. You are not required to live on campus your first year or any year, and you actually get to choose in which dorm you want to live in if you do choose to live on campus. All 23 of our dorms do house freshmen through seniors. 
Tucson is very much a college town. It offers great art scene, electric shops, coffee spots, restaurants, concerts, festivals, and so much more. Um, being from the Midwest, my favorite to point out is the gorgeous Tucson weather. It's an average school time temperature of 83 degrees and over 300 days of sunshine. What's not to like about that? If you are a senior interested in applying, you can go ahead and do that now. Our application is open, applying is easy. We do not require essays, personal statements are optional. We are also test optional. We do not consider letters of recommendation, so no need to submit those. When we evaluate students for on their application, we're looking for some very specific information. We are looking to ensure that you've completed these 16 core courses. It is a very standard curriculum. Uh, most students don't have any problems fulfilling them. Just also know that when we look at your application, in addition to just counting these classes, we're also going to count these grades towards your core GPA. And that GPA is going to determine your um, admissibility to the school as well as any scholarship consideration. So you are automatically considered for scholarships. There is no need to submit a separate application. For our fall 2022 application cycle, it is going to be based only on that core GPA that we will recalculate for you. Um, so just know when you're applying to the university, you're also uh, applying for these merit scholarship awards. Of course, we have additional opportunities outside of these merit scholarships, um, but more to tell you about that later once you're an admitted student. So I know I just ran through a lot of information really, really quickly, but um, if you're interested in learning more and you want to explore more of our campus, I invite you to check out these, this visit, these different visit options we offer. If you just go to arizona.edu slash visit, you can check out our in-person and virtual visit options. So that is going to wrap it up for me. I will drop in my contact information in the chat and I hope to connect with you all soon. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Pitzer College. Hi, everyone. My name is Santiago Ibarra, and I am the Director of Admission at Pitzer. Um, first thing I want to talk about is our location. We are located in Southern California, Los Angeles County. So though we're in the suburbs and it's a very safe, cute town, your parents will love it, great restaurants, um, we have access to the city of Los Angeles and all the internships that the second most populous city in the country will offer you. We're also close to the deserts and the mountains. So outdoor activities or hitting the beach is very popular. In um, March, we actually have a ski beach day. There's a ski resort about an hour north of us. And of course, the beaches in Southern California remain pretty warm throughout the year. Something important to note about Pitzer is that we're part of the only intentional consortium in the United States. So there are five colleges in one square mile, Pomona College, Scripps, Claremont McKenna, Harvey Mudd, and Pitzer. We were all formed in different decades. So we all kind of have a, a slightly dif different personality. Um, but though we're small, we actually just have over a thousand students at Pitzer. There are 6,000 undergraduates in this one square mile, really living and learning together, taking classes across the consortium and having larger resources because of that. So I talked about the decade in which we were formed, 1963, same year as the March on Washington. That kind of kicked off who we would be and how we would interpret the liberal arts. And you see our list of core values here on this slide, social responsibility being the first one. We really think that your education um, should be used to better the world um, and to help others. So we really try to think about offering a curriculum that allows you to do that. The other values include intercultural understanding, interdisciplinary learning, student engagement, and environmental sustainability. Um, I don't have time to go in depth about all of them, but this is just sort of a highlight on how we approach intercultural understanding. My favorite thing to do in our catalog is to actually look up every course that has the word decolonization in it, because we're really trying to break that mold of who was supposed to go to college um, back when the University of Pennsylvania was formed, right? A, a lot of us would not be those people that it was intended for. So we really think about having a curriculum that looks at Latin American writers, Caribbean authors, African authors, and, and really trying to uh, view it that way. But we also mean intercultural understanding because study abroad is very popular for us. Um, these programs listed here, Brazil, Costa Rica, those are actually operated by Pitzer. And then we have about 40 other options just to give you that variety 
flavor. Um, we tend to be known as one of the more diverse liberal arts colleges in the country at about 45% students of color. So though we're still a PWI, I think we're doing what we can. And again, think about the five colleges. So it's not just, um, we do have a Black Student Union at Pitzer, but there's also the Office of Black Student Affairs at the Claremont Colleges. So your community can be a little bit higher. We're, we're often ranked as the greenest school in California, and it's a pretty green state. So we do a lot in terms of all of our students uh, living in drought tolerant landscaping and LEED certified buildings. We have a conservancy next to us. Students banned bottles of water, uh, plastic straws are not allowed on campus, meatless Mondays, all of those things, composting at the highlight of what we do. Student engagement is actually my favorite. Per capita, we have one of the largest student senates in the country. Students sit on every governing body at the college. So when you want to get something changed, you actually go through the student body. Um, I'll talk about one that happened this year a little bit later, but uh, hiring a faculty, who the next college president is, um, graduation requirements, students vote on all of those things. So you really control the college in that way. Social responsibility. I already mentioned a little bit about that. So I want to... Um, talk a lot about how that's a graduation requirement for us. Students have to take a social justice theory course followed by a praxis. So the praxis is really, what did you learn about in the theory course and how are you gonna use it to change the world around you while still at Pitzer? How are you gonna use those hours to really fight an issue? Um, one thing that our students helped us push through in the admission office this year is actually we will not be accepting SAT scores or ACT scores whatsoever. They will not go through the application process. We've been test optional since 2003, uh, but we really felt that it was time to, to take a stand and say that we know that testing tends to benefit students with means to have test prep. And so we decided that we're not gonna use it whatsoever in the coming three years and see where we are after that. We only um, require one counselor recommendation, or ca counselor recommendation and teacher recommendation. So don't feel like you need to dig too far on that. Um, when we mean selectivity, we really mean the core values, right? So if you're that social justice person, if you're that environmentalist, um, if you're that leader on student senate and pushing your schools to make some changes, that's the type of student that makes sense for us. We say A's and B's get you in the conversation, but who gets admitted? It was really a reflection of those core values and how um, they stand for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. I'm running out of time. So I wanna give my colleagues back their moments. Thank you. Thank you so much. So next up, we have Western Illinois University. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Katie Gorsuch, and I hope you all can see my screen with the presentation slides on there. Um, I am an admissions uh, counselor at Western Illinois University, and I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what Western has to offer. Um, now, just to get started in terms of the numbers, uh, we do have two campuses at Western. Um, our primary campus is located in Macomb, Illinois which is about four hours from Chicago. We do have a second campus in the Quad Cities, um, which is um, a little bit closer to the Chicago area. The main difference between our two campuses being that the Macomb has that traditional college experience with the resident, residence halls, athletics, um, all of our student organizations. And then our Quad Cities campus is um, a little bit smaller and it does not have on-campus housing. So students are typically commuting if they're attending that campus. Um, you can also take classes online at Western. So if you're looking for an alternative option um, for college, then that could be um, something that you pursue at Western. Um, is my pres, uh, I think something. It is not on down. The oh, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, <laughs> it closed out for a second. Okay, perfect. Um, between both campuses, we have 7,500 students total. Um, so if you're looking for a school that has all the great resources of a larger state university, but has that small community feel, Western, Western can definitely be that fit for you, whether you're at the Macomb or Quad Cities campus. Now, um, we have over 60 programs to choose from at Western. 
Um, you can find all of these programs at wiu.edu backslash academics and um, click on any to learn more about the individual programs. Now, some of our programs that we're known for include law enforcement and justice administration, agriculture, business, computer science, sports broadcasting, musical theater, and nursing. Again, we do have over 63 programs to choose from, so we definitely have lots of different options out there, and I really encourage you to explore those. Um, we do have a majority of our classes taught by full-time faculty in class sizes that are on average about 18, so you definitely can get that one-on-one -on -one opportunities with faculty members and personalized class experience. Now, in terms of things that you can do outside of the classroom at Western, we do have over 225 student organizations. So there's lots of ways to get involved, whether that be through leadership organizations, our fraternities and sororities, um, multicultural organizations, and so on. So there really is something for everyone. Um, we do have on-campus living options in Macomb. So we have six residence halls that have living learning communities, which are themed housing floors that you can live with students of like um, like interest or similar majors. Um, and then we do have several on-campus on dining options, including restaurants like Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, and Qdoba. Now, if you need resources as a student on campus, we have a lot of support systems in place to help you be successful um, through, for example, our Multicultural Center that houses our Casa Latina Cultural Center, Gwendolyn Brooks Cultural Center, LGBTQA Resource Center, and Women's Center. Um, and they provide um, events as well as educational opportunities and organizations that students can be involved in, whether you identify with those centers or just want to get more involved with the opportunities that they're offering there. In terms of cost at Western, it's about $22,271 for the annual cost to attend. However, don't let that number scare you. That's including um, housing, meal plan, tuition and fees. And on average, students receive a financial aid award of around $18,000. Now we do have our um, cost guarantee, which means your tuition fees, room and meal plan, meal plan rates are locked in for four years starting the year attend. You would start attending Western. So that means you're never um, going to have those costs go up or have any surprises with those fees um, changing each year you go to Western. They will be locked in for at least four years. We have lots of great scholarship opportunities. You can see them all at that website, wiu.edu backslash scholarships. Some of these scholarship opportunities are automatically awarded based on your admissions application. For example, our Western Commitment awards you $3,000, $6,000, $8,000 or $8,000 a year, starting for students who have a 3.3 GPA or above. Um, so that can be a great automatic opportunity that you get for all four years. We also have our visitor scholarship. So if you visit campus, um, then you can get a scholarship just for attending an admissions event. Now, if you're ready to apply to Western, you can apply now for the um, fall 2022 uh, semester. We are accepting applications. There is a $30 processing fee, but the application only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. In terms of requirements, um, if you have a 2.75 GPA or above when you apply as a freshman, you will automatically be admitted. We do not require test score, so you do not have to submit that ACT or SAT score. Now, if your GPA is between a 2.0 and 2.74, we may request additional information, but we will let you know what that's going to be. You can also transfer to Western, so if you're looking at going to community college first, that's definitely an option and you can consider us in the future for your university. I invite you to connect with us, so feel free to follow us on social media or send us an email if you have any questions about Western, and thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so next up, we have Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. All right, give me one second. All right, everybody. My, oh, give me one second. I'm a muted. All right, perfect. So Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Valdesija. I'm a regional admissions representative uh, for Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Today I'm actually reporting live from Carbondale, but I am based in Chicago, okay? So let's talk about SIU. We are located in Carbondale, Illinois, which is about 
five and a half hours from Chicago, um, literally five and a half hours south of Chicago, but we are obviously in state. Um, you know, Carbondale, I promise you, is not surrounded by cornfields. We're in the heart of a national park. Um, there's lakes, there's rivers, so it's definitely something to look at. And it's got a very rural feeling to it, right? It's not the biggest town. It's about 35,000 people, including the student population. But I promise you there's enough um, in the town to do for students who will be attending the university. Now, in regards to, the, to our actual university itself, uh, we have about 10,000 students. So again, we're not the biggest university. We're not the smallest. We fall right in that perfect medium, I think, where you won't be overwhelmed, but you're not going to be underwhelmed. Obviously, diversity is a huge part of the SIU way. So we have 100 different countries uh, represented at SIU alone. Along with that, we also do offer over 200 majors. Um, so we have a large selection of majors. Obviously, students are allowed to double major. They can minor. We offer master's, PhD programs, and we have our own professional schools. So if you're an individual, that's thinking about doing multiple things, SIU is definitely going to offer you that experience. On top of that, we also offer what's called a dynamic learning experience. So yes, we do offer, uh, we offer degrees, but we do offer opportunities for hands-on experience through internships, externships, and we are a recognized research institution. So that means you'll be able to get that opportunity to work with professors, on uh, research in many various programs, not necessarily just like the science programs where everyone thinks about, but we do research in pretty much every single major and there are paid positions. And again, the biggest aspect is the opportunity to be able to get that hands-on opportunity. Now, on top of our over 200 majors that we offer, we do also offer a lot of resources to our students. We understand that students are coming from various walks of life, so we have all types of different resources, right? So, for example, if you're interested in studying abroad, you know, there's 44 programs in 57 different countries you can choose from. We also have a university honors program as well, um, career development center. So again, yes, we do offer degrees, but we do also help you in developing your professional skills, making those connections very early on to future employers and so on. We also do offer, again, the Student Multicultural Resource Center. We do understand that students, again, come from their various backgrounds and, you know, just uh, various walks of life, like I mentioned before. So there is a resource center, um, you know, for every particular individual. And if you're just an individual who wants to learn a little bit more about a different group or ethnic or cultural, um, you know, kind of uh, group on campus, you have the opportunity to utilize the Student Multicultural Resource Center that way as well. Uh, we also have disability support services. So again, at SIU, you know, we, we understand that, you know, again, everybody's different, everyone needs different things. So we try to offer as many different resources as possible on the campus. Now, in regards to um, getting involved, right? So we have over 300 registered student organizations. Registered student organizations are pretty much clubs, right? So we have over 300 clubs, right? So you have fraternities, you have sororities, you have academic, religious, you're professional. Every major has their own club as well. So for example, if you want to do automotive, we have an autos club. If you want to do aviation, we have a flight team. So again, there's a lot of different things. And these organizations um, or these um, registered student organizations become important because, you know, it's a way for you to balance. Yes, you're doing your major, but then you also are going to be able to do some other things that maybe you're interested in that you necessarily aren't looking to get a degree in. So again, the registered organizations are amazing and there's tons to choose from. Now, when it comes to living on campus, since we are five and a half hours from Chicago, it is mandatory to stay on campus just your first year, right? So just for your first year, again, do you have to stay on campus? The dorms come fully furnished, Wi-Fi and cable, AC and heated. Right now we're offering single rooms, right? So you don't have to share a room and the bathrooms are suite made style. So you won't be sharing the bathroom with you know, 30 other people. Literally you just share the bathroom in one other room and that's it. In regards to the meal plan, just remember we do offer an unlimited meal plan so you can go eat as many times as you want for as long as the dining halls are open. Now, if you are coming from Chicago, um, like I did when I was an undergrad and attended SIU, there's various options for you, right? You could bring your car freshman year, you could take the Amtrak in Union Station, it will take you straight down to Carbondale, or, you know, you can um, also use the, what are they called, the charter buses and stuff like that. So there's different options, but just remember, yes, you could bring your car. Yes, there's a train that goes down to Carbondale, and we'd be more than happy if you ever get a chance to come down, pay a visit prior to maybe your senior year or even when you graduate. Now, 
if you're into sports, we are Division One in sports. Um, we have 15 different divisions that we participate in, um, and we're the Saluki. So that's our thing. If you ever get on campus, you're going to hear a lot of bleed maroon, go dogs. Um, you know, so we're very big on school spirit, um, and we're very, very competitive when it comes to our sports. In regards to cost. So per year at SIU, including your tuition, your fees, and your room and board, we're at about 25526 right? So this is generally the sticker price. This is before um, you receive any type of financial aid or any scholarships. Um, but just remember that, you know, if you do apply to SIU, you can be more than happy that I will go over all this with you. Now, in regards to scholarships, all of our scholarships are based on GPA, as you can see here right, and no SAT or ACT are required, and when it comes to applying, it's the same thing, $2.75, $40 to apply, and the transcript, and we'll be able to make a decision. If you have any questions or any concerns, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'll also drop my chat, my information in the chat, and again, thank you for your time. Well, thank you. Um, so next up, we have the University of Richmond. Perfect. Just one second. I need to share my screen. Okay. And where's my slideshow? There it is. Perfect. And can everybody see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So, guys, real quick, my name is Jose Garcia. I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for Diversity Outreach and Partnerships here at the University of Richmond. Real quick about us, I'll tell you where we're located. We're actually in the capital city of Virginia. So we're in Richmond, Virginia, about 2 million people. This is a glimpse of our campus. We're six miles from downtown, great location. For us, we sit two hours south of DC. We're two hours from Virginia Beach. We're two hours from the mountains. Like I said, we're on about 350 acres of land, but it's a beautiful campus. And we talk about the city of Richmond. It's a growing city. It's got 25 different museums, lots of history here, more than 900 different restaurants, also become a big business. We've got seven Fortune 500 companies, a couple of them that you guys might know include Capital One as well as Wells Fargo. But just a little glimpse of who we are here. And then, ooh, why does this thing not go? So a little bit about us guys. Again, we are one of, we are a top 25 academic school in the country, actually ranked number 22 among liberal arts colleges called US News World Report. I'll talk about resources. Here we talk about what we give you, make sure you're gonna be taken care of. We are a school that meets 100% demonstrated need, which means we give some of the top financial packages in the country. And we talk about diversity and diversity here guys, not only means racial, ethnic, geographic, and socioeconomic, it also means educational. Two thirds of our kids will actually walk out of here with two or more degrees by the time they graduate. So just a little bit about us, but for us guys, we're about 3,200 students, about a thousand grad and law schools. We do have our own law school here. 99% of our classes guys are, are less than 30 people. The average class size is 16 and we're an eight to one student to faculty ratio. 90% of our kids live on campus all four years. We do guarantee housing for all four years. I think that's something we said because it builds a strong community. You're gonna know from us, you're gonna get that one-on-one -on -one attention. You're gonna get that ability to get to know your faculty and your staff. I say, we're not a small, we're not a medium, we're a medium kind of school. So the, in the sense of that, you'll know a lot of people, but you won't know everybody here. So here you're gonna work hard. But we talk about play hard as well. So we play hard. There's a lot to do outside the classroom. Over 180 different clubs and organizations. It's just a kind of glimpse of what you can do. We also are a Division One school. We have 17 D1 sports across the board, and we also have 32 different club sports. So for us, there is a lot going on for us right there. So for us guys, we want to make sure that you guys are active, that you're doing something outside the classroom. The average student does three to four clubs in their lifetime. Also big is volunteering, working on campus, everything of that nature. But again, working hard in the classroom, but playing hard outside the classroom as well for us. For this, guys, we'll talk about academically. You have, when you come in, you actually will be undeclared. You cannot pick a major first year because you might discover a new passion. You might change your mind. After your first year, you can pick a, you can pick a major. We have three different schools that you can choose from within the university, our School of Arts and Science, our Robin School of Business. And we're very proud of this. We're the first university ever to have one, our Jepson School of Leadership Studies, which focuses on leadership studies, either in a current field or we get you ready for a job that may not exist. We always give the example, 10 years ago, no one knew what a YouTube influencer was. We were preparing students for that job. And this is what leadership studies is. Like I said, two thirds of our kids will graduate two more degrees and you can crisscross colleges. So you can go business, arts and science, leadership studies, arts and science, the choice is yours. Guys, we're gonna give you a lot of resources here. One of our biggest resources is the Richmond Guarantee. 
we guarantee every student at least one summer, if not multiple summers, up to a $4,000 grant, free money to do whatever you want career path wise. Maybe it's an internship that doesn't pay you, pay yourself. Maybe it's an internship around the country and it cut pays you, doesn't pay for your housing, pay for your housing. Maybe it's research, whatever you can think of, we wanna make sure you have that opportunity. We never want you to lose an experience that you can get over the summer towards your career path just because of finances. We got your back on that. Again, up to $4,000. Everyone gets it one summer. Most of our kids use it two, if not three summers. So it's a lot to do from there. The other big thing for us, we want you to explore. You're gonna learn about our mascot later on, but for us, we are very spread out around the world. We want you to go out there and explore it. Go see the rest of the world. We are the second most studied abroad school in the nation. 67% of our kids will go abroad at one point or another for a semester, for a summer, for a 10 day trip. But we want you to get out there. We want you to do it multiple times. Over 90% of our kids get some sort of grant or scholarship to go abroad. Guys, you're gonna learn so much outside the classroom. We talk about that. Learning isn't just in the classroom, but it's outside the classroom. So for us, making sure you guys get a chance to go explore the world, see everything's happening from there. So I think it's something awesome about us is the fact that we give you the opportunity. We actually are pushing you out the door to go see that. This is a glimpse of our incoming class that's coming in this year. As you see, we're very diverse. And again, diversity is a big word for us, not only in the, social, in the racial and ethnic, where 27% of our incoming class identifies U.S. students of color, 11% identify as international. We 13% of our kids identify as first generation or the first one in their family looking to obtain a four-year degree. But we talk about geographic. As you guys can see, we are a very national, international school. We're from all over the place. So it kind of gives you a glimpse of who we are. And then a little bit about us guys is talking about where our kids are coming from, but also just building that community. Again, I go back to that word community here. You're gonna feel that family environment, that place, that tough love. We're gonna push you, but we're gonna take care of you as well with all the resources, everything possible. Guys, we are a deadline driven school. So this is a glimpse of our application deadlines. We're an early decision, early action, regular decision school. I recommend this all time, apply early. Guys, we're about a 28% acceptance rate and it's, it gets better as you apply earlier. If you wait later, it's much more difficult. So again, getting your stuff into us, we are test optional. All right, so making sure, like I said, it's your choice, you wanna go from there. When we look at you guys, we're being very holistic. We look at the whole package. So we're gonna look at not only your grades, and if you turn test scores, it's your option or not, we're gonna look at you, activities, recommendation letters. We only require one from your counselor. We say no more to three to four. And then from that point, guys, we, again, we require the FAFSA and the CSS profile if you guys are looking to get financial aid. Any questions you got, guys, please feel free to contact me. This is my information. I will drop my information in the chat box, guys. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Our application opens up. We are Common App and Coalition. Any questions, feel free to reach out to me, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so next up, we have Vanderbilt University. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Sloan Stewart Bartley. I am an admissions counselor at Vanderbilt University located in Nashville, Tennessee. I hope you guys are doing great tonight. I'm so excited to get to tell you a little bit more about Vanderbilt. We are a medium-sized private research one liberal arts institution. And what we mean by medium size is about 7,000 total undergraduates. I really feel like that's the sweet spot where it's large enough to where you'll never meet everybody. Um, and we have students coming from over 50 countries worldwide and from almost all 50 states here in the US. So there's a lot of geographic diversity in our student body, uh, but it is small enough to where you feel like you can navigate it more easily and you can get to know people um, and find your community on campus. Um, one of the wonderful benefits of having a smaller student body size is that we can house all of our students on campus all four years. Um, so right now about 94% of our student body lives on campus. Um, there's a small percent of seniors who can apply to live off campus, but the default is living on campus, being in the middle of everything that Vanderbilt has to offer. Our first year student class size is always around 1600. Again, it's that nice size to where you can find community and transition to college a little bit more easily. Um, and it's something that we will um, plan to stick to. So our first year class size will always hover around 1600. In terms of what you can study here, we have 10 colleges and schools in total. Um, that includes our graduate programs, so our medical school, law school, business school, nursing school, all of those graduate programs are on the same exact campus as our four undergraduate schools. So when you all apply, you will apply to one of our four undergraduate schools. We have our College of Arts and Science, which is our biggest school. Um, it's our liberal arts hub, so all of your more traditional majors like biology, chemistry, psychology, economics, political science, those are all housed in the College of Arts and Science. We also have a school of engineering. So if you wanna to prepare to be an engineer um, or you wanna study computer science, you would be applying to the school of engineering. 
We also have Peabody, which is our College of Education and Human Development. If you wanna to prepare to be a teacher or go into a human development um, major, that would be through Peabody. And then lastly, we do have a school of music. It is conservatory style, so it's really small. You're getting one-on-one -on -one lessons timed with faculty. Um, if you're not wanting to study music, but you are interested in music, um, Vanderbilt's a great place to do that. Our ensembles and our school of music are open to non-majors. On-campus student engagement is a hallmark of the Vanderbilt student life experience. When students ask me what are the common threads between students, I say they are all students who are passionate about improving um, campus or the world in some way, and they wanna get involved. They're, they're very engaged on campus in activities, but also in leadership roles. I would say every single one of our students holds a leadership role on campus, and they take it as seriously as a full-time job. They take it as seriously as their academics. So it is just as important to us um, that there is variety in the student activities. We also value diversity on our campus and the admissions office values it in the selection process and building a first year class that's diverse. Right now about 43% of our students identify as students of color. We also um, you know, have a lot of geographic diversity, which I mentioned, um, socioeconomic diversity because of our um, financial aid, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but we know that coming from all these different backgrounds um, and coming to Vanderbilt to live and learn together improves our campus experience for everybody. But we also know we wanna support students from different backgrounds. So we do have some amazing resources on campus um, like First VU for first generation students, um, our Black Cultural Center on campus, our LGBTQ plus center, our Office of Religious Life to support students from different religious backgrounds um, and an equity, diversity and inclusion office as well that kind of provides oversight to all of those things. On campus, we have a student to faculty ratio of seven to one. That means you're gonna get a smaller classroom experience that is more discussion based. So if you learn better in that kind of setting, getting to know the professors, that is what our classrooms tend to look like. We are research one, so over half of our students are completing undergraduate research. And we do guarantee that all of our students will graduate with one immersive learning experience. That could be research and internship, studying abroad. And many students often do more than one of those things. And lastly, we are a division one school with 16 division one sports teams competing in the Southeastern Conference, which is one of the biggest NCAA conferences in the US. And our students are guaranteed tickets to all of those sporting events. And so that is a really fun pastime for our students. I wanna elaborate a little further on the quality of life of our students. Um, getting to have a balance on campus where they're spending just as much time in social activities, student activities, going to cheering on the Commodores, campus traditions, campus concerts. That is what rounds out our student life experience and makes it fantastic and why our students often will be ranked number one or number two in best quality of life. I also wanna highlight our financial aid program uh, because it is um, outstanding and it is how it makes all of this possible for students. Um, we meet 100% of demonstrated financial need for all students in a scholarship. We do not package loans. Um, we meet 100% of the need um, in a scholarship. So to apply, you submit the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Um, I will provide links at the end of this to um, sessions to learn more about it. But do know that we have an amazing program that makes Vanderbilt affordable um, for most, if not all families. And lastly, I really wanna highlight the city of Nashville where we're located. Um, I don't know how many of you have been to Nashville before, but it is a growing city. It is a very dynamic and fun city. And I really think it is one of the things that makes Vanderbilt the most special is that we're located in the heart of downtown. This picture here is of the Nashville skyline and you could see campus. Um, the Kirkland clock tower is in the bottom middle. It's lit up and we're only about two miles from downtown. So our students are right in the hub of the city. They have access to all of the restaurants and concerts art museums, coffee shops, anything you might wanna do we have here in Nashville and it makes it a really fun place um, to live and learn as a student. So I will put my contact information in the chat um, if you have further questions and I'll also link um, our website where you can sign up for virtual and in-person um, visit opportunities. But please come check us out. All right, thank you so much. Um, I am gonna ask all of our panelists to turn their cameras back on and join us back on the screen. And I'm also gonna put the link in the chat for you to do your attendance sheet, just to make sure you did that form. So if you're in this room and you're a student, make sure you have done this for one time tonight. Um, so um, for our panelists, we have a couple of questions in the Q&A um, that I would love to post to you and we'll answer them in the same order that we presented. So we're actually gonna start about, um, start with a question about your equity and inclusion efforts. Could you talk a little bit more about how your school is handling their equity inclusion efforts and how are you empowering students to bring about change?
All right. Um, from the perspective of the University of Arizona, uh, equity in education is something we strive for. Actually, inclusion is one of our six core values. So it's actually um, something that we've dedicated our um, entire campus community to. Um, we believe diversity makes us stronger. That's actually one of the things we like to promote because it's true. Um, about 44% of our total student population do come from a diverse background. So um, emphasizing um, welcomeness, inclusivity, um, equity across all levels of our education and in our community is something we do really um, want to strive for, specifically with what students can do. Um, we are all about student engagement, student activism. We have over 600 different student clubs and organizations, um, some of which focus specifically on um, representing different culturals and bringing about changes, our student government. So um, we do also have um, housing specific to those students. Um, so just really uh, various cultural centers, student groups. We also host different events across our campus um, that are really committed to bringing attention and action to ensure uh, diversity and inclusion across our campus. Yeah, uh, I like to start off on the academic side, just because I think we offer a lot of coursework where um, students of color, people of color feel represented. We actually have the second oldest uh, uh, Latinx studies program in the country. And so we're really trying to recognize that that um, underrepresented in college individuals really need to be part of the academic research and discussion. So we do a lot of like research and sociology on first-generation students at public high schools in Los Angeles County. Um, last year, we did a, um, a racial justice initiative where the president brought in a lot of guest speakers, um, but I think it, it goes beyond, because I think we're doing, again, we, we're doing fairly well in this category and have been for a long time with our progressive values. Uh, this year, we actually graduated our first student who is inside um, an incarceration facility. Uh, you know, we have the, a, a new BA degree for incarcerated individuals and our students actually go and take classes inside prisons next to uh, those individuals. And I think it's just for us sort of continuing to think about what's next and how do we break the cycle of incarceration and, and uh, mass incarceration. So I, I think those are the things that we're doing now at our level. From Vanderbilt's perspective, we are doing a couple things. Um, I would echo the, the cinema at Pitzer, you know, committing to more research in, in that arena, but also on our campus for students um, opening a multicultural community space. Um, we're also collaborating with um, groups within Nashville um, as a way to, you know, continue those equity, diversity, inclusion efforts in the city that we're located. Um, one of those partnerships is with the National Museum of African American Music. Um, so those are just a couple of things that I would add um, that are different than, than what's already been said. Yeah, and then for SIU, just kind of harping on what everyone else is saying, uh, the, the Resource Center, the Multicultural Resource Center plays a huge part. Um, you know, I have the pleasure of talking to those individuals specifically uh, because, you know, I work with you all, so I want to talk to them so that I could tell you all the information that you need to know. And, you know, there are a lot of different initiatives. Uh, for example, this year, SIU Carbondale actually hosted the Sharing the Dream Conference, uh, which serves to empower undocumented and DACA recipients. Um, but we also do offer many different, um, you know, resources for LGBTQ plus students, um, the Women's Resource Center, the, the Black Resource Center. Um, so again, it spans to a lot of things. And again, it, it is, and weaved into the academic side as well. Um, you know, as an alum of SIU, I actually graduated as a multicultural resource, I mean, a, a international studies major, and I specialize in Latin America, and I had the pleasure of actually having a Latino professor, right? So it was, it, it changed my perspective of everything as a student, because I was able to identify with the person that was actually teaching me. So again, those are the type of things that you'll find at SIU, not only in the faculty, not only in the administration, but also in the peers and everyone in the community as well. And I guess I'll just kind of round it out. I think since I'm the last one, but um, just to keep continuing off of that Western um, uh, with our multicultural story, again, that, that is, serves as the hub for really, um, promoting that diversity, inclusion, and equity. So I would say overall, our, our campus community and leadership really supports those student organizations and that activism and social justice. Um, when students have you know, an issue they wanna speak out of, 
um, or they want to march and, um, you know, do a display for a certain issue, we have that support for systems and uh, for students and, and really empower them to um, be active and um, sharing those stories and, and making a change. And um, not only is the campus community involved with that and our multicultural center, the staff really support and help students um, organize that, but we bring a lot of times our community leaders as well. Um, so the, they're joining in and really building into the Macomb community um, and allowing students to, um, you know, demonstrate and um, really supporting our students and the voices that they have. Um, and then in addition to the, the student organizations, we've done a lot of training um, for, for staff, especially over the past few years, um, to provide them um, just some insight and, you know, helping people, even though they're educators, being more educated and um, providing those resources for individuals on campus so we can, um, you know, become a better campus community and continue to support our students um, in their needs that they, they need, that they have, so. Yep, and here at the University of Richmond, um, we actually this year have our opening our grand opening for our Student Center for Equity and Inclusion, which actually is an umbrella of four different offices, which includes for us our Office of Multicultural Affairs, our Common Ground, which takes our first gen students, our LGBTQ plus office, and we have an office built just for our low income students, students that may come that have a need differently from there from other students of that nature. So we work with a variety of students from there. The other thing we do on our campus, and I embrace it all the time, is the ability to have uncomfortable conversations, making them comfortable. Um, the state of Virginia, the city of Richmond, there are some great history notes, there are some bad history notes here, but we talk about them all the time, we look at them, we we go over there and we experience everything of that nature, the ability to have an open conversation with somebody, a discussion, not an argument, but a discussion, I think that's what Richmond is about, is being able to communicate, and even with the people you don't agree with, having those open conversations, and again, being uncomfortable, but becoming comfortable in those uncomfortable conversations. Well, thank you. We are out of time. So if you asked a question and it was not answered, just know that all our presenters will get the question Q&A section and they'll also get your contact information. So I want to thank our panelists, number one, for being here and giving us your time. And also like to thank all of our students for logging on. Thank you so much. When you close your box, your window, we'll give you a, a quick four question survey that you, that you can complete for us. Please give us some feedback. Also, there are many more sessions that are happening tomorrow night. Just make sure you're signing up for that. In about a week, you'll find this session's recordings as well as everyone, all the rest of them at strivescan.com forward slash Chicago Scholars. All right, thank y'all. Bye.